Psychic medium John Edward has been our special guest host today. Uh, John, we're going to see you a little bit later in action, reading our audience. Uh, you have, of course, uh, have chosen Studio 10 as your only live TV audience reading, which is so exciting for us. Thank and we you. cannot wait. All these people have come to see you. I'm kind of terrified. I don't know what's going to happen. But first, two of us. <laughs> <laughs> but first we wanted to get to know you a little bit more. I mean, when did you realise that you had a gift? Um, I like to use the word ability as opposed to a gift. And the reason why is I think that when you use the word gift, it deems me more special than most, and I'm not. I have an ability. We all have an ability to tune into energy. I've just worked at it for a really, really long time. I might have it to the excess. Um, I call it the freak gene. And I think it um, allows me the ability to do what I do. But I was 15 years old. I had a reading with a psychic. She told me I had this ability. She told me I would be doing this in a very public way when this was not even anything on my, my, my radar. What did you want to be when you were 15? At 15, I wanted to own a deli. <laughs> that's what I wanted to do at 15. Well, that's a nice job that's, too. That was, that's exactly what I wanted. It was just like, a, I, it was a fun job that I had and I thought I could do this. We all wanted to wear in a deli. <laughs> How did your family react when you told them about your special ability? Well, my mom's side of the family was very open to it and they used to have psychics come to the house all the time. My dad was a New York City police officer and a career military guy who was as opposed to this as you can actually get. So it was like I wasn't allowed to be around it. But then my mom and dad divorced. I was living in my grandmother's house, which is where all this stuff used to happen. So they were way open to it. Is it an ability that runs in your family? It does. I mean, your grandmother's that yes. side of the family? It, it, yeah. it, it does. And my kids definitely have, you know, I call it, again, the free gene. They, they show signs of it. But I'm not training them to be psychic. I'm training them to pay attention to their intuition, which is what I get people to do when I do readings. If I'm doing an event, I try to get people to recognize the world of energy that we're all a part of. So is it, is it something that some people have innately more than others? Or is it yes. something that everyone has and just some people try and better? Is it like the Force in Star Wars? Because that's exactly what I'm exactly like about. the Force in Star Wars. You're, you're so feeling me. It's exactly that. <laughs> and what is it like? Is it like... When I was a kid, I, everybody yeah. wanted to be Luke Skywalker. I yes, wanted to be Yoda. I, oh, <laughs> you're really aiming higher. What is it like for you when you start receiving this energy? I mean, explain it for us and maybe paint a bit of a picture because I imagine hearing lots of voices. Yeah, you know, TV in Hollywood has done almost a disservice to what this is really like. It's very, very subtle. It is not... It is not overt and loud. It's not like a big board, a big billboard in the sky. It is it's thoughts, words, feelings, and energies, and it's having to interpret what it is that you're feeling, what you're seeing, and then in your frame of reference what it means. And it's interpretational. So a lot of times I'll get the interpretation wrong, but I always like to state what it is that I'm seeing, hearing, and feeling first. Because the skeptics are always gonna say, Oh, it's lucky guesswork. And it's like, well, not if you're paying attention. If you're paying attention to what's coming through, it's not. John, I've been sitting next to you on the panel and you've been making notes right. throughout the entire show. So you are getting readings or voices during well, the show? What happens is when, and I discovered this when I was hosting Crossing Over, the folks that do television, right, you guys are doing a show, the producers and the directors, they have an agenda, you have breaks and ins and outs that you have to get to, and on Crossing Over they wanted to do it in the same way, and they would stick me out into the audience and they'd say, now talk to the camera and introduce the next segment, and I would be sitting there and all of a sudden I would literally get this feeling like I was being pulled that direction, mm -hmm. and I was never able to do it. I was never able to actually, because it's two different ways of thinking. There's the logical, I'm having a conversation, and then there's the, okay, now I'm not going to be logical, I'm going to pay attention to what I'm feeling. So it, it's really, like, if you want to imagine it, it's like a daydream, and you're now paying attention to what it is that you're daydreaming about. You oh. touched just briefly on your critics, because obviously you have many millions of believers. I mean, just check out the studio audience here, people who have faith in what you do. What do you say to the skeptics out there who Depends say upon the type of skeptic we're talking about. You know, it's like diabetes. There's type one, there's type two. You know, it's like, <laughs> you know, there's, there are skeptics and then there are cynics. I think everybody should be skeptical. I am a skeptic and I do this work. I don't just believe somebody because they say they're psychic. I need to see validation and information. I've dedicated 30 years of my life doing this. I've been to the University of Arizona. I've been tested. I've, I, I do stuff to, to raise awareness because I want people to see it's real. But on the other side, there are people that I think that are not real. And I think there are people that even worse than that have some ability and are not coming from the place of the right intentions. They might want to use their ability to become famous or they might you know, want to do it because their ego's in the way. Whatever the, it's got to be to help people and to make a difference. So I think it's important to be skeptical, not cynical. I think John is a believer, aren't I was, you? Well, I was very skeptical, in fact. I was probably the most skeptical person. We, you know, my father and my sister used to have a bit of a, a link and I always used to make fun of that, but it was like, you know, dad would come home with a, with a, a chocolate bar 
And he said, I suddenly got this impulse to stop in the West End of London and get out and buy a chocolate bar. And then the impulse went away and then I got home. And my mum would say, that's amazing, because Sharon was saying, an ad came on the TV and she said, I really wanted a Kit Kat at six o'clock. And that's when he got out and bought the... So that, I was always going... What's your experience going, with John Edward? Though? Well, I was very sceptical. <laughs> I was very sceptical. We, we, uh, we've met a number of times on the radio show with Jono and Dano. And both myself and Dano were sceptical. And then... Very. Very sceptical. <laughs> and uh, we, we'll used to make, we used to make lots of jokes about John. And then my mother started watching uh, his TV shows. And then uh, one day after the radio show, John said, can we just have a quick little chat? Um, not on the radio. And uh, he told me a few things about my life. And, and I was amazingly gobsmacked for once no. and speechless. No, and, uh, I don't I, believe it. <laughs> I'm, I made some major changes in my life and I think that basically John saved my life. Oh, no. Otherwise, oh. I probably wouldn't be here now. Thank so, you. Um, yeah. John, it's, a, it's a pretty big call to say that he saved your life. Mm. How exactly? Well, I was about to um, undergo some life-changing medical things and basically John had said to me, here's a bit of a heads up, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You're about to go to a crossroads in your career, a crossroads in your family life, and you need to be fit and healthy and lighter in weight because things happened and within a year my mother had passed away, I'd lost my job and uh, I lost a lot of weight and I decided to sort of reinvent myself and start again. And uh, wow. so I think that really did save my life because after having tests and things like that, it was like sort of, buddy, you're uh, travelling towards that big light. Yeah. Wow. Although, to be fair... I didn't want him over there, basically. That's yeah. just called what it's <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Although you because could, he'd you... always be talking to you. <laughs> go on, Joe. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. I was just going to say, to be fair, you could go up to anyone who worked in the TV industry and say, you're going to lose your job in a year, and chances <laughs> are you'd be right. Yeah. Um, no, look, it's, it's great talking to you. We cannot wait to get into this live audience reading. In the meantime, if you mm. would like to get tickets uh, to one of John's shows when he tours Australia in November make sure you head to johnedward.net for all the details. Um, not long now, and still he's doing it, as we just said. Uh, Studio 10, you are watching us, absolutely. <laughs> We're going to take a break.